Alrighty, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, time once again for my pseudo cast. And for those that don't know what a pseudo cast is, um, this is not quite a podcast. Uh, I'm not live streaming this, so I'm just uh, just gonna talk about stuff for roughly 15 minutes. So sometimes shorter, sometimes longer. And um, and before I get too into this, uh, I'm gonna crack open a can of V8 Energy p- uh, pomegranate blueberry flavored. Get ready for some pops. And yes, as you can see here, um, this is Planet Mars. So, hold on. And like yesterday, because I couldn't find, uh, I couldn't find just the right YouTube video. What you're seeing here is the image on Wikipedia. And then um, the, the actual sound the actual uh, Mars sounds is it's going to be uh, this whole it's going to be uh, the result of this whole ordeal I had to go through to find um, I mean same problem I've had with the other planets a lot of them have like um, dark ambience in the background ASMR crap in the background um, this time around because apparently uh, a new uh, a new space lunar module rover thingy um sometime like a few months ago uh landed on mars recently and started recording stuff the problem is is um the the guys on here will not shut up about it i mean it's just i mean it's some guy you know flapping his gums for like 10 seconds and then 10 seconds of sound effects and then he stops and he starts jabbing his jaw again for another 10 seconds followed by 10 seconds of sound effects and there's a, a lot of videos that are like this um, a lot of the videos are like on, on the news and stuff, CNN, Inside Edition, etc. So try to find something, uh, something authentic, for lack of a better word, is very hard to find. And, and even um, even the sound effects I have now, it's um, I guess uh, people consider it to be fake, but like I said, it's the best I could find. Um, the the closest I could find was uh. It actually did sh- uh, it did play what Mars actually sounds like, but the problem is, is uh, the damn rover vehicle, the noise it makes, is also thrown in there as well. So, so yeah, like I said, just just making the most of what I got. So here goes on that. Okay, but otherwise, um, haven't I didn't really do a, do an extreme an extreme amount of stuff. Um, I I think yet like yesterday, I pulled a game called Slay the Spire out of the mothballs and started playing it. I'm like, damn, I totally forgot how good a ge- how good of a game this was. Um, and uh, today, or I should say, uh, last night. Um, normally I stream uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. But um, uh, just kind of on the spur of the moment, I decided to stream Slay the Spire instead. But yeah, and, um, and it ended up turning into one of the longest streams I've had in a while, like three and a half hours. Usually with uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, it, I usually stream for like maybe a couple hours, and either either a I'm I'm feeling too much like shit, just you know, even 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 if I even if I was uh. Uh, fully bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, I will, probably would have cut off the would have cut the game off after like two, two and a half hours in anyway, just because I'm I'm pretty much on cooldown or I've run out of, run out of things to do that kind of thing. But nope, not with Slay the Spire. Uh, I was uh, streaming that for about three and a half hours. In fact, later on that evening, I decided to go ahead and stream it again for like a couple more hours. So. It seems I'm really liking this game. But I hope, and I'm hoping this isn't a, this isn't a harbinger of things to come, like maybe I'm approaching the end of the road on fighting games and just, just you know, and at some point, you know, decide to just go ahead and give them up. Because, I mean, I, I don't, I don't feel like I've, um, 
I've quote unquote caught up yet. Yeah, you know, I'm not. I don't feel I'm done catching up yet. There's still, there's still other games I want to play. There, you know, I still want to play Dragon Ball Fighters. You know, longer that kind of thing. I'm hoping I'm not up. I'm hoping me streaming off Slay the Spire for such a long time means that uh that uh I'm gonna be giving up on fighting games. I hope not. But if it, if it happens, it happens. And I have said this in other casts too. Um. I haven't played fighting, consistently played a fighting game in like 30 years, so, so I feel like a, I feel like I got a lot of catching up to do. But at the same time, fighting games are not my favorite genre. They're not my favorite video game genre. That um, that's actually a, is actually a tie for first between uh, MMOs and RPGs. Slay the Spire to me is classified as an RPG so it's going to get the it's it's going to get the higher priority but again um but it, not to sound like I'm not trying to be a broken record but I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping this isn't the end of fighting games though either I'm kind of hoping that uh that uh Slay the Spire is just going to be a phase I'm going through but again I'm not going to at the same time though I'm not I don't I don't want to force myself to play a game that I don't want to play either. So. Okay. Um. But, um, in a real quick, I have to break off and do something real fast. Um, I'll be right back. Mars. For ages, everybody has been wanting to colonize it. Why? I don't know. I'm actually kind of with Bill Maher on this. He was talking about the same thing, too. Why? I mean, we got so many problems here on planet Earth. Let's get planet Earth squared away first before we start colonizing other places. Or, or to put it cynically, before we start fucking up other places. Yeah, because that's, um... But yeah, that was something else, too. Um, There was a there was actually a, a Jessica Wildfire ar ar article about this. Um, guys like, um... He invented, uh, he invented the Tesla, Tesla stuff, um... Elon Musk, um... Jeff Bezos, Richard Branson, basically all these billionaires, you know, all the rich people that, you know, they're polluting the environment, or they're damaging the environment, they're you know, they're just basically, the things they say, the things they do, are really ruining the mental health of the world. These are also the same people that are now talking about um, opening up space tourism. They're all talking about getting something like this going. I mean, not just calling, I mean, not just, you know, not just colonizing all the worlds, but you know, Making making the solar system a tourist attraction, but apparently that's what these guys are starting to work on now. Which you know, again, I don't agree with that one bit. I mean, we need to, you know, with all this money and power these people have, why not use it to help? You know, why not use it to help restore the planet, or or maybe uh, you know, helping you know, undoing the damage that they've done. But no, they're just gonna fuck things up here, and they're just gonna take the coward's way out. But I think um, Jessica Wildfire was saying the same thing too. You know, they're, you know, they've already damaged it. They basically they've damaged this planet beyond repair. 
At least that's how I'm understanding it. Um, the damage, you know, the damage is pretty much unrepairable now. So now they're gonna looking for a means of escape. You know, now they want to go. You know, again, they want to try to escape their problems, or they want to they want to escape the accountability of the damage it caused. So now they're looking into they're looking into going to other going to different planets. You know. So yeah, I thought that was pretty bad. But yeah, you know, and I think uh, Bill Maher was saying the same thing too about Mars. I mean, you know all the work that we'd have to do to colonize that place? I mean, it, if it can sustain life, then it, it can just barely sustain life. It's, it, it's not going to be an easy, smooth transition. I mean, it's still got to take a whole shit ton of work just to get, you know, you know, just to make, just to make that area livable. You know, and even then, what's going to happen, you know, even if the place does become inhabit inhabitable, what, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, take a look around you, you know, you know, climate change and, you know, and car-dependent suburbia, that kind of thing. It, it's just going to be more of the same on these other planets. So, so yeah, I, like I said... We should, you know, we should get things squared away with this planet first before we start looking into other places. You know, and, but and on the other hand, c considering all the fucked up things that we've done on this planet, do you really, you know, do you really want to go up? You know, do you think we really should be going out to other places? I don't. You know, but again, um, I wish I knew, um, I wish I knew which, uh, episode of Bill Maher that, that it was, but yeah, he was pretty much saying the same thing, too. It, it's not worth it. You know, so, but enough of that. I've already, so, that's pretty much my two cents. Um, oh, and also, I, um, I started what. I start, also started watching a movie. It's a 1920 silent movie called Nosferatu. You know, it, it, it's a vampire movie. Um, it's really interesting. I think this is probably, probably the first time in my life I've ever actually watched a silent film. But I, I haven't watched all of it. But like maybe like the first 30 minutes of it. One thing that really came to mind about this movie. That is one hard-working organ player. I mean, because... Throughout this entire movie, it it's just it's the organ player just playing just and there is like no stops, no pause, no nothing. I mean he is just playing the organ all the way through this movie. Like, you know, most I mean those actors, I mean, they'll go and they'll you know, they'll probably do their scene and then they'll go sit in their trailer, you know, sit around in their trailer until you know, until it's time for until they get called back in, you know, but but, you know, they're all taking rest breaks and stuff like that. Not this organ player. I mean, he's in it the entire time the movie's running. You know. Or at the very least, he's having a play for 90 minutes straight. Where, again, all the other actors... It, it, looks, it looks almost like... Due to the way they're, you know, they're doing their facial expressions... And the way they move around and stuff. It's so exaggerated. I swear, they've got to be doing all this in one take. Because there's... I mean, I get that it's a silent film... So there's no there's no actual talking, but you, you know, but you know I can't, again with with all the gestures and expressions and stuff, you're gonna have you're gonna have to present a pretty strong case that they're uh, that they're doing this in more than one take. It, I swear it looks like they're just one taking everything. You know, because again, they're, I mean, it, with silent films, I mean, acting isn't exactly rocket science, because I mean. They don't have to talk. So I mean, they they got they got the cue cards or they got the 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 text panels. I don't the dialogue panels or whatever. I don't know what they're called, but you know that's doing all the work right there. All the actors really all they have to do is just plain act. So so that's what I mean. I think the actors must have it pretty easy with these silent movies. It's like again to kind of reiter reiterate, man feels bad, man to the. 
feels bad, man, at the organ player. Because he's, again, he's going for an hour and a half straight. Like, non-stop. And something else I liked about, uh, about this movie. This vampire, unlike most other vampires that I, that, that I can think of right now, um, is not sexist. It's like most of these other vampires that I've seen in these vampire movies, they always go after the hot babes. They're always going after the women. You know, especially if the hot, especially the hot model kind of women. You know, I mean, I, I get you're a vampire. You know, you're immortal, powerful, and you pretty much have your pick of the litter. But you know, this doesn't make you know this doesn't make for very enjoyable viewing. I mean, I mean it's cliche as hell. You know. Oh, I, I take that back. I take that back. One movie that I could think of as the one movie that I could think of off the top of my head, uh, Salem's Lot. They don't discriminate on there. There ain't no sexism in Salem's Lot. They're they're chomping everybody. So I mean, like the the guys are going after the guys. Um, to th um I don't. There weren't any um. There weren't any girl on girl bites that I can think of. But yeah, the I mean the guys are chomping down on the guys. So, I mean, again, there ain't no sexism. Again, it's not like most other uh, vampire movies out there. It's like the men are going straight after the women. And, um... Oh, God, um... Lost Boys. I, th I think... Um... Come on, Joe. Come on. No, wait, Lost Boys, technically, they're not sexist. But I know, um, in those, um, in those vampire attacks in that movie, they're not really actually just biting their neck or anything. I mean, some of them are just ripping the flesh off and all that stuff. So it's, it's pretty brutal what they were doing. And, um, the... Hang on, racking my brain. Okay, okay, yeah, this is... Okay, my, my theory is falling flat on this. Interview, interview with a vampire. Okay, but, um... Um... Louis Chompstown on Brad Pitt. I forgot, I forgot the name of the main character. Um, Chompstown on him. Oh, come on. And I've seen that movie a few times, too. Uh, um, I think um, yeah, I think that's the only one I can think of. I think they uh, they claim other victims, but I all the ones that I know of um. Brad Pitt chops down on the little girl. I forget her name, but she does she does become a popular actress when she gets older. I forgot her name. Um, I think um, yeah, but otherwise I think it was just uh. Tom Cruise chopping down on some chicks. But yeah, I think they I think they actually do chop down on uh on men as well. But I don't think it ever I don't think they show it in the movie, but I think they do imply it though. Um Bram Stoker's Dracula. I don't no, I don't think they um I don't think they actually chop down on um on Keanu Reeves. No, I think they just I think they just cut him open and then peeing out his blood doing like doing that. And they they weren't actually trying to kill him. Or they weren't trying to completely drain him of blood. They were just trying to drain enough to where he's incapacitated. But otherwise Otherwise, yeah. I think the vast majority of uh vampire movies that I've seen that I've seen over the years, it's like they're going after the babes. You know, they and as far as uh as far as men chomping down on other men, probably no, most likely not, because that'd be seen as that'd be seen as gay then. Um women women chomping down on other women. Uh I can't 
can't recall. Yeah, I can't recall. But yeah, any, anyway, anyway, so far, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of kind of going way off the subject here, but, but anyway, so far though, I'm actually kind of liking this movie. I mean, but like I said, it's like, it's first thing no, Mr. Noss does is he jumps out on the main character. Main character is a guy. So that, that's that's something I don't see too often. Otherwise, I can't really think of anything else to say. Um, I, so, I guess I'll just go ahead and call it good here. Um, but thanks everyone for uh, tuning in and listening to me. I appreciate that. And I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, but until then, thanks again guys and see you all next time.